what sort of step one for you? Um, okay, so... Um... Yeah, of course. I'm Stephen Brash. I work as a teacher, but long ago I trained at a university art course and have since then been painting and exhibiting work over 25 years. So these are like the basic DNA of everything that I do. You're thinking visually in a really loose way. You're just putting stuff together. So I would have sketched them at the time and I'll sort of color them in, you know, from that memory, those sort of dusty greens and the sandy sort of colors. And then sometimes that will then become a painting later on. I loved art at school and it was one of those things where you know you get to the end of school and you put down what you would like to do for university and i put down a whole heap of different things because i really didn't know what i wanted to do and i had put qt as like my first choice on a whim it was sort of dumb luck but it turned out to be a really really good decision for me each year to a year and a half i'd have exhibitions of my work that was when I was a finalist in the Maui and Shandong, which was a really big competition for emerging or young artists. I must have been only 22 or something like that, which at the time was the youngest person to get picked. Um, so that was really amazing and that sort of gave me the confidence to keep going. When I was at uni, each painting was about a particular event. At the time, I was just sketching in a sketchbook, which I do like silly little, they're not particularly beautiful drawings, but they're meaningful for me. About two or three months later, the memory of particular events and stuff turned into paintings. I painted that way so that I could look at a painting and said, yes, that's about that time. As I've gotten older, those stories have become more, not as specific, but not generic. So we're always driving through Hale Street. So I'd be looking at this particular way that you sort of, you go over and dip down and you go through this big sort of concrete canyon. And there's a moment when Hale Street is out before you. And that little moment of the feeling of, like the road doesn't necessarily look that way, but the sensation of the road is whoop, hop, whoo. So a lot of the paintings now are not necessarily about illustrating a story. They're more about having a visual representation of that particular sensation. I was a teacher aide for about eight years. During that time, lots of people basically convinced me that I needed to become a teacher because I was good at it and I did enjoy it. I'm a high school teacher, so working particularly with seniors who are passionate about art is are really enjoyable and because I'm teaching art part of that is being able to demonstrate your skills because every day a student will ask you oh I'm having trouble with this it's easier for you to go oh well try this and you demonstrate it it's a subject where you you have to learn by doing you're stretching your art muscles all the time the way that I approach artwork is is almost unconscious so you sort of stake out a territory and sometimes you're pushing on those borders and then sometimes you might have thought oh i've gone too far and then you'll retreat back to your safe area again i know that i'm painting differently now than i did when i was younger but that's because i'm different now than when i was younger in that way my painting is very clearly and strongly linked to who i am i like i love landscape pa painters i love people who are creating a world when you're looking at their artwork you're looking at their the world through their sensibility so suddenly you're transported from yourself and so i'm painting in a similar vein to those people like i love looking at lots and lots of art lots of different art but there are particular ones that I will keep coming back to and they become almost your stand-in mentors. As you get older, you get braver, you get more ornery. You're sort of more like, oh, I can paint whatever the hell I want. You start to push out on those edges a bit more because as an older person, you're not so worried anymore of, oh, that doesn't look like me or that doesn't look like what art should look like. Part of what I love about painting, I love the materials of it like the the actual the gooey stuff of actually making it and 
you're sort of wrestling with these materials and I, and I really enjoy that. Often I think you're completely surprised that anyone beyond you has any interest in them whatsoever. They're really important for me, but I'm flabbergasted constantly when people tell me how interested they are in the paintings. Anyone who is creative, they can only do it with the support of the people around them. You know, whether that's family or friends, like, yes, I am in the shed making the work, but that wouldn't happen if Belinda didn't support me in that. Belinda, for me, has been a person that has always supported the work that I've done and supported me as a person to do that work. So that is really important. The paintings are the things that are most like me. So by saying that that is a worthwhile exercise, a worthwhile thing, she's saying that I'm worthwhile as well. So that's um, a really amazing gift. So, there you go.